Es geht weiter mit der Nummer 74 der Welt, ein Mann aus Österreich, aus Knittelfeld, der ein tolles Jahr 2017 spielt, statt unter anderem in einem Finale auf der Pro Tour. Und er wird der Mann neben Mentor Suljovic sein, der sich für Österreich auch für die WM qualifizieren kann. Herzlich willkommen, die Hypercane Soran Lerchbacher! Ladies and Gentlemen, ein besonderer Moment hier in der Lokhalle von Göttingen. Jetzt wartet die Nummer 1 der Welt, der aktuelle Premier League Champion, der aktuelle Weltmeister. Herzlich willkommen hier in Göttingen, MVG Mighty Mike. Twenty-four minutes to ten, and it's time for the big man to make his way onto the stage. Michael Van Gerwen aiming to defend the title he won last year when he beat Mensur Sulevic in the final in Mulheim. The world number one is back on the European Tour stage, and he comes into this tournament with 19 European Tour titles under his belt. He's also aiming for his sixth European Tour title of the year to emulate the six he won in 2016 and should he win it he would ensure he holds the number one ranking on the european order of merit going into the european championship itself but michael van gerwen arrived here in Göttingen on the back of an opening night defeat at the world grand prix john henderson enjoying the biggest win of his career in dublin can zoran lurschbacher enjoy the biggest win of his career paul nicholson no Anything's possible, but <laughs> we did utter the words yesterday, Rob, that arrested Van Gerwen is a very dangerous one. Now, I saw Michael very briefly when we came back from the break in the afternoon. He looked in very good spirits. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First leg is Michael to throw first. Game on. And as per his social media feed this week, he's had the break with the family. He thoroughly enjoyed it too. And I exchanged a couple of texts with him while he was in Dubai, just shooting the breeze. But now he's ready to get back to work. And from now on, this day until the end of the year and prospectively towards the world final, it's all about darts. One hundred and forty. I think it's very smart as well, Rob, in the darting spectrum now where you can play every week if you're at the top of the game. World Series, 100. Pro Tour, exhibitions, appearances, everything that goes with it. It can take a lot out of you. Now, we've already mentioned that a lot of players are tired this week because they've been to Barnsley, they've been to Dublin just before that. Michael van Gerwen is about as fresh as anybody here. So for that reason, I put him as favourite to win this title. Yeah, I think it's probably done in the world of good. He missed the International Darts Open in Risa as well, but prior to that, he'd won four out of five European Tour events. There was just that third round exit at the European Darts Open. But since we last saw him on the European Tour stage, you know he's had that... Defeat by Vincent van der Voort in the Players' Championship 19. There was another defeat by Sulevic as well, 16. as well as that. Defeat by John Henderson in the first round of the World Grand Prix. 
He actually won seven legs to Henderson, Matthew six Wong. in that match when you toss it all up. But of course, given the format of the World Grand Prix, the, the set format, he went out. So it wasn't enough. And it's another big title that he's let go of, as well as the world match play, which he relinquished to Phil Taylor in July. Yeah, he's only got three World Grand Prix. But he is still the holder of plenty of other silverware. Game shot the first and he's also the holder Michael of the first leg here as well. Welcome back to the Pro Tour, Michael. Zoran Lurchbacker put him under proper pressure there. Setting up the double. The world number one was up to it with a very good three-dart combo. Well, Michael Van Gerwen rounded off his European Tour campaign last year with a third-round defeat by Daryl Gurney in Hildesheim at the German Darts Championship. I think he'll want to ensure he signs off in style this time around. That defeat by Gurney, by the way, you know, it sparks as we thought it might do, Van Gerwen into life. He went on a run of 34 matches unbeaten after that, encompassing his success at the European Championship, the World Series of Darts Finals, the Grand Slam, the Players' Championship Finals, the World Championship, the Masters, the opening night of the Premier League as well, and his opening win over Mick Todd in the first UK Open qualifier. The run was ended, match number 35, by whom? William Van Barneveld? Nope, it was Richie Ebhaus. Ah, oh, of course it was. The carpet house Richie. from Enfield, who won his PDC tour card at Q School in January. That was in the first UK Open qualifier. I must have been thinking about his streak on TV, which was ended by RVB. I forgot about that Richie Ebhaus game. Yeah, yeah. in the first UK Open qualifier, he beat Mick Todd in the first round, and then he lost to Richie Ebhaus. 34 60. matches unbeaten after that defeat by Gurney. And that's what happens with Van Gerwen. You know, he has a, you think he's got a bad defeat, but it just seems 100. to spark him into life. And that, that was an incredible sequence of victory. To, to have that sequence over that broad, encompassing range of titles that he was able to pick up as well. He was under a lot of pressure there, but it just was relentless from Van Gogh. And I feel that something similar might happen now as well. After that defeat in Dublin, he's had the world match play disappointment as well. 98. A win here. It could just spark him into another brutal sequence of tournament successes. Lurchbacker needs 14 and the ball to get on level terms. Oh, that's he's very good, you know. He's here to play. Like and the man who has a very horrifying caricature on the back of his shirt. 100. Took care of that 84 in professional style. Very, very good indeed. Very nice indeed. Eye catching stuff from Zoran Lurschbacker, who, uh, let's not forget, is here by right. He's here by virtue of a 6 3 win over Ricky Four Evans two. yesterday and some good stats to back it up as well. Almost 50% on his doubles and he averaged over 100 as well against Rapid Ricky Evans. 100. Interesting that the crowd are singing there's only one Phil Taylor one. <laughs> the world number one Michael Van Gerwen is on the stage. I don't think we've heard the last of that rivalry. 41. I for one would love them to go at it at the Worlds at some point. Just to put everything <laughs> in my own vernacular to put it to bed. Because Michael will not be playing Phil Taylor on the Pro Tour next year. So they've only got a couple of months to sort this out. Yeah. Well, we talked 59. about Richie Eddas being the first man to beat Van Gogh in this year. Phil Taylor has beaten him three times this year, and all of them fairly significant encounters as well. One in the Premier League in the group stages of that one. One, of course, at the World Match Play quarter-final, and the other in the Champions League group stage as well. 10-9, that one that killed off Van Gogh and hopes. I've been thinking about the the right word to describe the atmosphere in Blackpool when MVG played Phil Taylor. I still, haven't come, I still haven't come up with it. I'd say it was pretty toxic, actually. That's the word I used at the time. The I'm sticking with that as well. I thought, it was, I thought, it, I thought they'd let it go after a while, but it, was, it just carried on. And um, I, I had a degree of sympathy for Van Gogh in there, actually. I thought it was a bit unfair. I know that when Michael plays in the Netherlands well, of course yeah that he gets 
support and that was echoed by his victory in the Dutch Darts Masters in Maastricht just over a month ago. Something ever so slightly different about the atmosphere in Blackpool for me. It was toxic is definitely the best word I've heard. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. My wordsmith, Rob Malarkey. Describe that one, if you will. That is perfect. Oh, Lerschbacher going toe-to-toe -to -toe here with the world champion. Let's not forget, Michael Van Gerwen is the world number one by some distance. He's the world champion as well. And Lerschbacher, well, oh, there's another treble. 20. 141 away. 100. Michael will look at 18s, yeah. 20s now, another one of those will be handy. That's exemplary stuff from the number one seed. Yeah. Mm. Problem. 43. And now he just Michael has to hope that Van Gerwen does not find the route to this 164. And he's having another think about it. Two trouble 19s. Would have left the ball. Just trying to square it up now. And leave 60. Sean on your bar, 78. Very much like the 84. This needs to go. Technically, it's a little easier because he doesn't need it at the ball. He's got to hit tops though. 58. Michael requires 60. And they're the opportunities that you have to take when you're up against Michael Van Gerwen, who now has two darts at tops. He's only got one in hand now, though, and he's trying to find a way through here. Game shot on the fourth way. But it was, uh, despite the congestion, it was a route safely negotiated and safely navigated by Michael Van Gerwen, who establishes a two-leg lead here. 140. And the difficult assignment for Lerschbacher has just got that little bit harder. I'd like people at home, if they have the opportunity, to look back at that double top that he hit in the last leg, because the first 100. shot, you think, is a perfect guide, and why move? However, the perfect camera angle given to us by our crew here showed face on, straight onto the board. Why did Michael Van Gerwen move to the right? Well, the reason for that is if he hits that dart that's above the, tr the double top, from the side, ever so slightly, he's got a lot more to aim at. And he throws it very hard, does Michael Van Gerwen. It creates a bigger wall to hit to sneak it underneath. It's a tactic that has been used by Kyle Anderson and Simon Whitlock more than anybody else. And I just feel that maybe Michael Van Gerwen is starting to clue up on this kind of thing, and it's worked really well there. 93. Michael Ducard, 146. When you see players practicing as well, well, actually, I'll just come back to that in a moment. We'll just see if Van Gerwen can take this out. He won't. But um, you often just see players just throwing dart after dart after dart, right? I just wonder, do any players actually just set up specific blocks and specific angles to try and exploit? I know it's difficult to do, but do any do that? I do. Yeah. Yeah, just when you've 60, made slight I changes to your game 46. and you're trying to figure things out, I do that at home. I, I don't know Literally if other guys planting do. the first two darts and then saying, right, let's see if we can find a way through here. 26. Yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a nice challenge for when you're practicing. Just give yourself little... Decathlons on the yeah. dartboard. It's time consuming, but it's worth doing. I'm sure that Michael Van Gerwen's done pretty much everything on a dartboard that he wants to do, but. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's doing plenty here as well. Michael Double 10 this time for Van Gerwen. And uh, yeah, just uh, looking comfortable here. Had the uh, opportunity there to just engage momentarily with one or two people in the front row of the crowd. 41. I've noticed as well that obviously Zorin is one of the advocates for the flexible point and he's been using those for a good couple of years now but compared to the likes of John Michael, Rene Adams, Martin Schindler as you can see there I don't think because of the angle of entry for Zorin's stars I don't think his quiver or shiver as much as the other guys I do question 42. the use of the flexible point for Martin Schindler. I'm not 100% sold on it, but as far as Zoran is concerned, with his angle of entry, I think it works perfectly. 60.
as you can see the angle of entry for Michael Van Gerwen 59 very conventional something that hasn't changed in all of his career and in a time where people change points they change barrels and 16. stem rings and all sorts of little gizmos Michael Van Gerwen has been using the same setup for what seems like an what absolute eternity yeah he's uh, devoted to a, a very rigid plan of attack and I know the only thing that you change about him is his shirt you're gonna relaunch that campaign this I weekend, actually or? think and I know it's a, a not the color but the well, not, not the color he's had the same 16. shirt for a while I just think maybe it's time for the next Michael Van Gerwen strip 41 well he doesn't like 40. that and uh, just gives uh, Lersch back something to work with here Another one of those would leave double ten. 60 away. 100. Michael Rupal, 119. Tricky finish this. Got to go 19s first. Or oh, can do 19 ball. Go on. Oh, oh my God. God. Michael, Michael Van Gerwen. Just when Michael you think you've first. seen it all, he goes and does that. And that will hurt Zoran. But my word, did we enjoy it. Well, earlier today, 58. Vincent van der Voort pulled off a 120 check out with 20 bull bull. And Michael van Gerwen there has done something similar. But I think that was more impressive because there was less to work with there, I think, ever so slightly. Not wanting to take anything away from Vincent van der Voort. But that was terrific stuff. And Michael van Gerwen, OK. He's not really set the world alight in this match by and large, but my word, that was absolutely spectacular. A terrific moment by the greatest player on the planet. Ball 19, ball 5-1. And Michael Van Gerwen is cruising. He's purring his way through to the third round here in Göttingen. Yeah, words can't express how good that was. You don't see those shots very often. You really don't. Basically, like watching Stan Wawrinka hit a, a characteristic rocket backhand without a racket. That's how good it was. And he didn't take a lot of time either over it. That was the other thing. But then he hits a fat single three there to remind us all that he is human. The thing is, if you miss that shot, you look like a fool. But when you hit them, you look like a genius. He is a genius. Michael Van Gerwen. What? May have his work cut out here though because Lerschbacher might well threaten a break back and once again Van Gerwen struggling for a big number here. 216 remaining. 41. Oh, he's just having a leg off, isn't he? 21. I think so. He's uh, himself the opportunity. 96 away, that's hit the 25. Well, if Zorin had hit ball there, maybe you've gone treble seven ball. Uh, sorry, 95 away. 85. No, it was 96 away, what am I talking about? Anyway, 36 for Lerschbacher. 85, Jalan Rupal, 36. To get his second leg on the board and to break a streak of a few legs, mm. which he does, still in the match. You just never know sometimes. There have been matches in the past where Michael has been cruising and he's lost them 6-5. So Zoran's just got to keep the faith here and just keep plodding on. Yeah, Michael what Van Gerwen averaging 88.89 at the moment, which is very un-Van Gerwen-like. One thing that Michael's done 60. incredibly impressively over the last few years is doing enough on a Saturday and then coming back on a Sunday and being a different beast. Yeah. Peter Wright's done more and more of that this year as well on the Euro Tour, especially in Risa last One time. Moment. In the, for the first two rounds, Quansock and Ronnie Hybrex, he was, he was very sluggish, but round on round there was that gradual improvement. And Van Gerwen does that as well. Just warms into tournaments, doesn't he? And just does enough in the early stages. Few moments of class, of course, to see him over the line, asserting his authority. But Lersch back here. Asserting his authority here with a 180 to get him down so uh, 81. He's got a cushion of 300 and 
Merschbacher with a chance to consolidate that break and get another leg on the board and just give Van Gerwen something else to think about here. Yeah, just stick with it right now. You're doing the right things, Zoran. Yeah, 52 away, but he's got a little bit of room for manoeuvre. 41. Van Gerwen needs all of these. One and a forty. Zoran Newcastle, forty. Now, what is uh, Michael Van Gerwen's favourite line? He can't afford any mistakes. Well, he can't afford to miss double tens, Zoran. Well, the thing is, if he does, Van Gerwen's looking at that 19 bull route again, isn't he? 20. Michael Newcastle, 107. This could be it. Let's see. Well, he's gone for the ball straight away, so he's left himself 57. There's the 17, and there is the top snow. 87. You know, for a moment, I thought he was going to go seven ball, and that would have been ludicrous, almost disrespectful. But double five separates Zoran from getting this leg to the right. Yeah, that's a good dart. That's a brilliant dart. Under pressure, he needed that. Otherwise, he was going home. He may still be going home. But that will give him confidence, knowing that he can hit those kinds of shots under pressure. Well, let's not forget that uh, Zoran Lerschbacher was a recent finalist at a Players' Championship event in uh, July. The Hypercane 100. falling at the first hurdle, though, in three of his last four Players' Championship events of the year. But nevertheless, he qualified for the finals in Minehead with plenty in hand. It looks as though qualification for the European Championship is beyond him, but at least he's putting some respectability on the scoreline. Who knows, if he wins the next three legs, he will be there, but that is a very, very tall order. 83. It seems to me like Michael Van Gerwen has had enough of Zoran now, and he wants yeah. to get rid of this match. He's had his moment, and now Van Gerwen what? is going to put him in his place. 41 away. And Lerschbacher is out at sea on 3 one eight here. 140, Michael Lequire, 41. Nine for double 16 to see this game off. Double eight. Ooh. 25. And Zoran will be back. Oh. What a shame he's not on a finish. He's thinking. Well, surely Van Gerwen will take it out next time. It's um, 58, Michael Lequire, It's not 16. been vintage, Michael Van Gerwen, by any stretch of the imagination, but double four now. Game for the match, and he acknowledges that he wasn't at his best today, but Michael Van Gerwen being Michael Van Gerwen, that was more than enough. 92 or so, the average in that one, a 6-3 win over Zoran Lerschbacher to set up a meeting with Stephen Bunting tomorrow. Six from 15 on his doubles, only 40%, but... Clearly, the moment of the match, that 1-1-9 one, one, checkout for a 5-1 lead. Ball, 19 ball. That's exactly what Michael Van Gerwen can do. Uh, we'll get Van Gerwen's take on all of that in just a moment or two as we bid farewell to Zoran Lerschbacher. Uh, on the way next, a uh, penultimate match of the night between Jan Decker and Mervyn King. Of course, this wasn't the best game, but it's about winning the game, and that's exactly what I did. I had a one... A nice, really, 119 finish there with bullseye, 19 double bull, and and the last leg was okay, but I didn't play my best. But it's a long weekend still to go, and uh, I, I did my job, and I was win this game. And I'm, now I need to make sure I'm getting ready for tomorrow. And uh, I feel fine. I had a lovely holiday with my family, and I need to make sure I'm ready tomorrow. How was Dubai? Lovely, <laughs> like usual. Nice, being so in constantly, so it was good. You traveled with your dad or without your dad? That's actually a way. After, after, after big defeats, you, 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 you go with your family to, to holiday, right? Yeah, of course. I like, I, I like to travel around the world, especially with my family. And of course, I didn't take my dad. <laughs> I didn't even throw a dart. Uh, sometimes, you, for me, it's a bit, really busy period all the time. And when you have the chance to go away, I lost early in the Grand Prix. So, yeah, I took my suitcases straight away. <laughs> Playing and go to Dubai and oh, I had a fantastic time so and I'm ready for this tournament I'm ready for it. Great to have you here thank you very much. Michael van Gerven er freut sich hier zu sein er hat einiges vor hier in Göttingen auch das kennen wir von 